Hi, everybody. Dean Cottrell here, T360. I'm the Senior Vice President for us. I run the Brokerage Consulting Division. I've got my uh, sidekick here, Travis Saxton. Hey, Travis. Hey, Dean. Thanks for having me on Fireside Friday. Appreciate you. You appreciate you too. Travis is our senior vice president, our tech. He oversees the technology division. And then we're very excited to have Kevin, you with us here. Kevin Markarian. Uh, Kevin runs the real estate brokerage, the Marker Real Estate Team Group. Um, and I apologize if I butcher that, Kevin. Uh, Marker Real Estate Group, <laughs> oh, right? Actually, you nailed it. You nailed it. Yeah, Marker Real Estate. And you got awesome. my last name. You got my last name the right way. So that, that's extra points for you on that. <laughs> ah, good. We're, we're starting on a high. So we're very excited this month, guys, for the Fireside Chats. We're really diving into teams, team brokerages, um, and Kevin's set up like that. It's an it's interesting model. We're, and we're, Travis and I, we're going to be going back and forth, asking some questions for Kevin, just having a nice conversation. And one of the ways we find to start off this, you know, most times when we're having these conversations, Kevin, I think for people who are listening is really get some interest in a little background, you know, um, get a better sense of you as a human being before we dive into the, the essence of lead generation and all the other stuff going on. So, you know, tell me, how are you doing? How's your family? This has been kind of a challenging time and how's your health and COVID and, and give us some insight, please. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you so much for having me on, first of all, and I'm, I've always respected T3. You know, it's a, you guys do a great job. And uh, so I'm really honored to be on. It's one of those things where, you know, you kind of grow up and you look at, look up to something and you, you kind of admire it. And then now I'm, I get to be a part of it. So it's really cool. And I appreciate the opportunity. So thanks for having me on. Very kind. Thank you. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, it's been a, it's been a challenging year. I mean, it's, I don't, it's just been all around unique, right? It's, it's a completely different world. Um, things have changed dramatically for a lot of people. And, um, you know, we've, we've made the adjustments and I, I'll say though, like we're going to get into the team and all that and like technology and everything. So for us at Marker, one of the advantages and one of the things that like we've benefited, why we've benefited is because we've kind of run our business the way that people are starting to run their businesses now as a result of COVID. Yeah. So like, we've always kind of done zoom calls. We've always, you know, done virtual stuff and, and you know, we've kind of been labeled as like a virtual company, which I kind of didn't, I can't stand that label. Um, but I like to think of it more of like a tech based and always thinking about, I mean, it's our company is, is like run and started by me. There's no funding. There's nothing else behind it or anything like that. So we've had to be very careful with our expenses. And I've always sort of led with revenue. I'm going to get into like how I went from a single agent to a team to like now a brokerage on the Inc 500 list. Mm -hmm. So like, no, it's, just been very careful, but the point is things are well, and I'm just fortunate and feel lucky. And I think we kind of were a little bit ahead with um, how we ran our business over the course of the last four or five years. And now with COVID, um, people are starting to realize like, oh, I don't have to drive to the office to do a meeting every day because it doesn't really, I can get it done leveraging Zoom. I can get it done leveraging technology and the, the tools that are available to us. So I think like for us, we haven't really struggled with that adjustment. I know a lot of others may have maybe a little bit because we've done it this way. And, um, and so, I mean, with that said, like we kind of took the hit and March, April and everything was a little kind of scary because people went into their shells a little bit, but, um, but now, I mean, now it's thriving, you know? So, and, uh, and so I feel, I feel fortunate and I kind of feel like, Maybe we're a little bit ahead of our time a little, you know, back then. And, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, health-wise, everyone's good. The business yeah. is strong. And we're just, like, focused on continuing the growth of the company and helping other agents thrive and succeed. Good. That's, that's great good to hear. To hear. Yeah, great to hear. Um, to, let's, let's go through that little evolution that you mentioned from, from one agent. But let's take it one step before that. What brought you to real estate? Well, you know, how did how, you start? You know, it's really interesting. I want to see if I have this, this thing here. Um, I don't have it. So I had, I got into real estate when I was like 20 years old and um, I, I lived in the central Valley. I'm, I'm trying to find this. Thing so about, so about three, three years ago. But so I started really young. I lived in the central Valley, Modesto, California small town, like an agricultural town. And um, I didn't really have, I don't really, there was not 
a big, it's, there's this difficult, it's a small town, not a lot of like industry or anything like that. So I wasn't really sure what I was doing. And then my dad asked me if I wanted to, he knew a broker and he's like, do you want to become a real estate agent? And um, I thought like, absolutely, they're going to hire me. Like, I didn't know how recruiting worked or anything. I was very naive and young. So I ended up walking in, he ends up like hiring me. And um, so I got in really, really early. And um, it's funny because I have, I found an old yellow book thing that I highlighted a bunch of names. And that, that was like the first thing I ever did was just start calling people out of the phone book and that no idea how naive, do not call list or anything like that. It was like, <laughs> I'm trying to find this thing because I had it. But anyway, so um, started really young, did well. And I, and I ended up connecting with a developer uh, at the time called Morrison Homes. And now they've recently, they merged with Taylor Woodrow and now they're Taylor Morrison. Anyway, so really early on um, found success. I was like, I was 20, 22, 23 years old. And then before long, I was, I ended up becoming like the number one agent in the country for this big builder. They had like thousands of agents nationwide. And I started like, I found success early. And, um, and so the market started to pick up. This is right after 9-11, like 2004, 2005 just crushing it. Like the business, business was great. And then the market crashed. And then, you know, um, I felt like I went from great to, I mean, the market changed and I went from selling an income adjustment. Everything was just complete change And the central Valley of California was the epicenter of the foreclosure crisis. I mean, we had tons and tons of foreclosures. And, uh, I remember one day walking and at the time, if you, anyone remembers, you know, walking through some of those houses, man, there were, you know, they gut those houses. People would just completely just rip them apart, take everything, cabinets, toilets, like the whole house would be completely gutted. I remember walking through doing, doing a showing and uh, coming home and talking with my wife about it. And I mentioned to her, like, that wasn't a very fun experience. Like today, I didn't enjoy what I was, what I did today. Cause it just wasn't exciting. It wasn't fun. So and what I remember, year was that Kevin? Just... That was like 2007, 2007. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Right at the turn. Yeah. And so I remember talking with her and, and, and I was like, you know, San Francisco is 90 minutes away from us. And the market here is not looking very promising. My, and it feels like I'm failing. I was doing still I was doing well, but I felt like there's looking forward. There's really not a big positive future. So I thought to myself, San Francisco is 30 minutes or 90 minutes away. If I'm going to fail, if I'm going to fail, let me fail big. Let me go to the city. Let me take a swing. And I remember this is like a kid, young guy in a small little town. It's like those movies, you know, like the little mouse that walks into like New York City with the massive skyscraper. Like that's what it was. The adjustment was so huge, but I felt that I could do it. I felt like I could go and I could make it because I, I relied on my past success and being successful with prospecting and picking up the phone and calling. And so I always kind of look back and I, I want this to hopefully as someone listening to this will benefit is like um, everything that anything, show me how you do anything and I'll show you how you do everything, mm -hmm. right? So everything that I've done in the past, I'd have been at least average or better. And I remember at the time, the market was like 2007, 2008, people said I was crazy for moving, you know, this little small town, but my answer, and at the time people were saying San Francisco is per capita had the most agents in the country. Like you're not, who, what are you doing? Like you have no, no idea, anything. So I, I was like, well, everything I've done, I've been at least average or better. As a matter of fact, like I've actually done really well at everything I've like tried to do, right? Yeah. So why can't I be, why can't I do well there? Why can't I do well at everything? Show me how you do anything. I'll show you how you do everything. So I just took a chance. I went for it and I didn't know anyone. Started over, hit the reset button on my career. But the thing that really helped me was at the time, I, it was like, who do I know? don't know anyone, but there was something called online leads at that time that I could use to level the playing field. Yeah. And so I broke into a brand new market, didn't know anyone, but those really highly successful agents in these top end markets, they had no idea about internet leads at the time. Yeah. Right. So I thought, how can I level the playing field? I'll just buy some leads. I'll invest a little. And it was like Zillow. And these guys were just coming out. Like mm -hmm. I was like one of the first customers of Zillow, you know, probably, I don't know. I'm thinking like no one knew, no one knew what it was. So um, you, you were definitely early in the game there. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. Sure. And that's what I did. So, and you know, now there's just it's so much easier because we have social media and stuff like that. But it's like, just think about what, 
you know, now everyone's on the lead game and everything. So you start thinking, what is, what are the top people not doing? Yeah. And that's what I want to do. So, you know, I got into a market where people had been dominating for 20 years and, uh, this young kid no one's ever heard of like weird last name, like from, you know, some small town comes in and now I'm doing a lot of deals because I just was figured out a way to stand out in front of the crowd, you know? So yep. now it's the same thing, but just a different Avenue. It's not, I mean, leads are still cool and they're good, but there's different ways we can get in front and be visible. And that's what we're doing at marker. And that's what we help our agents do. And that's why they're thriving and succeeding at a high level. You know, it's, so we've heard it so many times, you know, fake it till you make it, all these things. In, in my 30 plus years, when I see people who are really successful, Kevin, like yourself, it's that confidence piece. It's that, that fear. And it's not that they, you don't have fear. It's actually you recognize it and you push through it. You actually say, you know what, I'm going to a different market because I'm going to take it on. I love this one phrase I heard many times ago, many years ago. It's called imperfect action is better than perfect inaction. So imperfect action. And that's what you said. I'm just as good or just a little bit better than others, but I'm just, you're just doing it, right? You're pushing. So love it, love it, love it. As I mentioned earlier, we're, we're having a, this month's all about in our fireside chats here, doing Friday fireside chats. I say that 10 times fast, right? Uh, <laughs> you know, we're going to be talking to teams, team leaders like yourself and really guiding. And, and Travis, and I do a lot of work with some of the top teams in the industry and we get benchmarks, best practices, and we have a lot of um, fun with uh, with teams because you guys are pushing the envelope. Um, so give us some insight, if you can, to those watching and listeners about kind of the structure. You look at your, your brokerage, multiple locations now, things like, give us, if you could, uh, everyone listening, what's the structure of your company? Um, well, a lot of what we do is related to helping agents grow their business. And I think there's a there's been a void for a very long time of brokerages that really, quite frankly, take a lot more than they give. And I remember joining a firm and it was like, the brand was so important, like the, the logo and everything. But, you know, and then over time I start to realize the logo, I mean, what, how am I gonna get deals? Is it because of the logo or is it because of my ability to connect with people? So ultimately like it's the ability to connect with people, right? So ultimately if I'm an agent, and I can't answer this question, what has my brokerage done for me lately, then I'm at the wrong brokerage, like quite frankly. So the way that we structure our company is to create opportunity for agents to succeed, to go out and do deals. And we generate thousands of leads. We, gener we, we cover, like do a massive amount of marketing mm -hmm. and we, so that we can create those opportunities for agents to go out and do more deals. And it's regardless of where those agents are in their business, whether they're brand new or they're like right now, we're working with lots of teams ourselves and brokerages ourselves to help them grow and take their business to, this, to the next level, leveraging lots of different tools and systems. But the way our, our business is structured is essentially um, like just finding some of the gaps in agents' businesses and trying to fill those gaps. And usually it's because it's, it's due to um, the ability to generate a large volume of like inbound like opportunity with clients like that's mm -hmm. I, in my opinion that's why most agents don't make it is because they're not able to generate business like on a, on a regular basis right that's it right so if i can solve that problem as a brokerage for agents then why would they go anywhere else like right so um and and it's not only like i said not just individual agents we're talking about teams how can teams scale like with recruiting and creating systems for themselves and things like that. So, um, so those, so, I mean, I don't know if that answers your question. As yeah, far as, well, how, uh, how about yeah. like the number of, number of agents in your footprint, okay. just to give our audience some context too. So uh, I have marker, which we have about 75 agents. And then I have a partnership in Sacramento with my business partner, Sunit. We have about, um, it's a different brand brokerage and we have uh, like another 80 agents or so there. So, uh, great. So yeah. Well, so, so, so what, what, what makes your team unique? And, and, and I want to kind of preface this question as you mentioned the evolution 12 years ago when you were first to market, but now everybody's going there. So not only what makes your, you unique, but how are you overcoming the challenges of the in the in flood of all agents trying to buy leads? And I, I last I saw there was 220 million leads, uh, in the United States for 4.5 million home sales. And you do the math there, that's that's 20 to one or you know something like that. It's it's a lot. 
Um, and so it's like, how are you competing in that crowded space? My friend Sam Karamian always says, when you're, when you're a great salesperson, you always do well at chasing the business, right? When you become somebody, the business chains chases you. Yeah. So, so what we try to do now is we try to create through storytelling, through brand awareness and presence, through long-term marketing and staying top of mind with people, we create an attraction. We, we, we create opportunity where people come to us so we're not necessarily having to chase them. And how we do that is through leveraging like very, I mean, people are doing this too, but there are certain ways you can leverage social media and, and leverage um, brand and leverage technology and digital marketing and digital advertising so that you can remain top of mind with a small group of people that are going to like be interested in what you have to say, right? So now we have the opportunity to really get in front of um, anyone that we want, <laughs> Right. I can get in front of anyone that I want and be incredibly um, visible and and create any kind of image or perception that I want. And to a point where the decision is so easy for them that I don't have to reach out to them. They're coming to me. And so. Yeah. Right. So that's what we're doing with our clients. And that's what that's what we teach our agents to do. That's what we teach our brokerages and teams that we work with to do. And uh, and we're doing it not only with clients, but also with other agents, like as in terms of recruiting, like when I'm saying that, like when I'm saying other agents, I'm talking about how right. we stay in front of other agents so that they understand our company, you know, cause we want to grow our company. Right. So let, let me ask you, let me ask you a question related to this. It's kind of a follow-up. You have, you have two major pillars that you've, that I've heard you say kind of maybe three, but one is, you know, lead generation online leads. The other one is kind of organic social media, building your own brand. If you had to, if you literally had to cut one of those down to zero right now, which one of those two would it be? Um, I think probably right now I would cut off the leads. That's what I thought you'd say. Yeah. 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 So you've built up such an organic, attractive brand where you're doing great things with organic content, social media, posting, engagement, following stuff like that, that you could sustain your business. Now, obviously you never want to do that, but uh, ultimately it seems like that's where you've graduated. And Dean and I talk about this all the time in the fellows yeah. program, where it's literally, we see this right before our eyes, the 10 agent firms, the 20 agent firms that are dependent upon leads and buying a bunch of stuff. And then something switches in their head when they get to 50 to 70 agents and they have to build their brand outside of these dependent uh, channels and those that can figure it out like yourself succeed and those that don't end up stuck. Yeah. 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 It's true. It's true. And um, yeah, it's, it's get to a certain point. And I just, I just think like it's more of a long-term play with the, with option number two, with regards to being everywhere all the time, but it gets to a point where I, where I was mentioning like where the business starts to chase you and that's where it becomes really powerful. Like, if I go to the store, I know what I'm going to buy because I've seen it so many. It's like branding. Like I know I'm going to go buy bottled water, like Perrier. Like that's what I want. That's what I'm going to buy. So like, it's because of the brand and so like how well they've done with putting that in my mind. that when I think about sparkling water, there's three companies I think about. Right. So that's what we are doing. That's what we can do as agents, but I'm not, my audience isn't like the world, right? My audience is a very small group of people that I want them, me to be the Perrier for, you know, yeah. like, so, and that's right now is an opportunity for us to do that very easily and inexpensively. And, but the challenge is it's long-term, it's long-term play. And um, it's really getting also people like further upstream. If you think about it on a funnel, you're, you're getting in front of people further upstream because first of all, it's cheaper. It's, it's free for me to do a video. Yeah. It's not free for me to buy a lead, right? right. So, um, so if I can get in front of people further upstream, by the time they get down to the lower part of that stream or that funnel where it's super competitive or everyone's paying for that, they're all scrapping for that, right? Mm -hmm. if, I can, if I can put in the time and a little bit of cost, but if I can get to them before they get to that point, like I've won the game before it even starts. Right. So it's like, yeah. that's where we want to be. That's, that's where like we want to spend our time is way up here because it's like I said, less expensive, but 
the trust is built. Like there's no pitch as much. Like they've already decided because we're so top of mind with them that like the decision is made. I want to tell a story. There was a, a uh, I was young, really young. I worked at a shoe store. Okay. I worked in, in the mall at a shoe store. I was like 19. And uh, we worked with these like super crazy hard salespeople. They were so good. They were all kids. We're all super young. We used to sell Jordans and yep. each Jordan was $5 a commission. And we like kill each other to try to get that customer. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, and we sold women's shoes. I was like Al Bundy. I was like the Al Bundy of like, <laughs> um, so, okay. So there were these cutthroat, like hard, there's still to this day, the best salespeople young 18, 19. And, uh, I remember we worked on a Salesforce commission base and there was this young guy that worked in the back in the stock room, no experience in sales, like doesn't come off as like a, you know, like a salesperson char charisma and all that. So, he, but he'd come in every day and every day he'd ask for a job every day and every day he'd get declined the manager, Ted, I remember. And, uh, and we'd like, kind of like, there's no way, right? He's not going to get a job. Like, what are you doing here? You're wasting your time. But every day he'd come in. So one day we, uh, and his name was Mike. One day it was around the holidays and we get to the, the store. We get there. Who's on the sales floor? Mike, right? Yeah. Mike's on the sales floor. So we're like, well, how'd this happen? Like what happened? We asked our manager and he said, well, Lori called me last night. She said she can't make it. She's going to quit. And it's, it's the holiday season and I need someone. So who do I call? Calls Mike, right? And Mike shows up and he crushed it that day, by the way. But the point is we should be like Mike in terms sure. of with our clients, show up and be there and be top of mind. It's, he could have found a better, more experienced salesperson. He could have found, like our clients can find a better listing agent or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. But if I, if I am, first of all, let's say I'm already a great listing agent. But imagine if I'm great at being a listing agent and I'm top of mind with them and I'm in front of them and I'm just like Mike, like there's no other choice, yeah. right? So that's the point is like, that's what we're trying to accomplish is be everywhere all the time, stay top of mind and the you're business doing. is going to come to you. And you're doing it too, Kevin. That's one thing when working, uh, Travis and I working with brokers, large teams, we call it the valley of death. There is a valley that you go when you're smaller and you have much more flexibility, you have much more control. And you had mentioned this, talked a little bit about automation. When you when you want to transition and you do more than 20, 30 transactions and you're trying to communicate on, a, on an ongoing basis to that many and more to try to grow your business, you get that valley of death in your growth of your business. That valley of death is, can I get to that 40, 50 agent number? Can I grow my team bigger? And you, know, and you have to have the water and the fortitude and the energy to get across that valley and the knowledge to get through there. So when you come on the other, you know, you're in a much place as a business. And that kind of ties into my next question for you, Kevin, because one of the things that we work with brokers and teams is on strategic, what's strategic intent. It's, the, uh, it's not strategic plan, it's strategic intent. It's, it's a Harvard Review article, it's just phenomenal. And I was talking about what's the intent. So uh, asking you, thinking about your business, when you think about like in the state, I mean, what is your ultimate, I mean, where would you like to take this? Um, for, for me, it's like, in terms of growth, it's exciting to grow. Like you think about, oh, I'm going to grow in terms of like just number of people that are part of your company and part of your organization. But for, for me, I think what's most important is growing, but growing with the right people. And uh, that's the most, that's the key. So to me, it's like, there's really like no end in sight in terms of growth, uh, but just growing with the right people and having people that have like certain principles and certain uh, work ethic and like character, all those things are very, very important. Mm -hmm. And um, like, personally, I I'd like to, my, my goal is to just have a number of companies within real estate, like personally, selfishly speaking, that kind of like, if you think about, for example, anybody that's watching this, and you're a broker or a team, think about how much business is procured through one of your transactions that you create on your own. You go get a client that you paid for. How much, how many, how much commerce takes place because of you? So, and so my goal right now is instead of me going, giving that business away, why don't I own that business? So we have a, we have an NHD company, right? It's like you start thinking about escrow mortgage, you know, think about and take it another level. 
you have like credit repair. There's like, you know, think about um, home warranty and then like landscapers, like you can get a piece of all of that business. Why not? I'm giving it away. So why not keep it? So those are some of the things I think we should be thinking about as brokerages and teams that you, you don't have to give that away. I mean, you can take a piece, there's that, different things you can do. But. That, that, that is such an untapped area in our industry. And Dean and I are going to talk about it on our next call that we host for our T3 fellows. And we're, we're basically talking about so many larger brokers as you get into the maybe 500, they're scared of this area because they can't police it. They can't, they don't know who the plumber is they're recommending and if they're going to do a good job and stuff like that or, or the landscaper or whatever it is. But those that do it right, that create the mechanisms and the automations and the relationships. This is a massive opportunity for real estate. And I want to do business with somebody that's going to come in and take care of my sagging fence post or, you know, seal my concrete patio or, or whatever it may be, upgrade my kitchen. And, and so like a company such as yourselves that, that figures that out is going to always be top of mind then. And, and I love that strategy where you're going. Oh yeah. And you know, this, it really, what it comes down to is just creating a process for everything, like literally creating, writing out a process for everything and, um, and having a process even for creating a business should have a process for that. So, I mean, I, I can even, I don't know if you want me to, I can real quick. I mean, I can share my screen to show you what I'm talking about. Yeah. Go, go for it. it. Okay. So like here, it's very <laughs> simple. I mean, it's not, it's not rocket science, but basically like right here, you can see marker processes, right? You just create a Google drive. And then you have your processes in there and, and this, the, and we have one for admin. We have one for our other companies, but like, it's very simple. You, you, how agents get paid, <laughs> like how to active access live trainings, how to complete a W9, how to work, how to join marker real estate, Facebook group. So we just, what we do is we'll create questions, write out every single possible question that uh, let's say you're talking about your clients. You can do this with your clients too. But for us, it's more on the brokerage and business side, our team side. But write out every question and then write out the solution. And before you know it, you have a business that you can now, if you want, you can sell it because you have a whole process that someone can pick up and move and take over. Yep. Yep. But yep. you have a smooth, like beautifully running machine. Right? Like it's like if, I, if someone wants to get know how to get paid, I don't need to hire anyone for that to, to explain right. it. I'll just say, go here. And I'll share this with them, right? So it's about creating processes for everything that you do. That's where you kind of like, I feel like now we're kind of getting to like the next level or whatever. And it's because of these little things that you do. It's not difficult, but imagine if I create a process for everything, I can like, it's then at that point it becomes like so easy to run. I can create a process to how to build a business too. And it just, and it just becomes so easy. The, the hard part is sitting and actually doing it. But, but that's, that's the difference between like, do you want to, how serious you want to take, how serious do you want to be about your right. business? Put the energy behind it, but the efficiencies are there. The details are there. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and I think that's the key. And um, so, I mean, it's just about getting organized and unless mm -hmm. us agents were like guilty of sometimes not being very organized and, and oh, yeah. it's hard, right? Because we're salespeople and it just, you have to kind of put your mind, in a different place. Um, That's an exceptional way to do it too, because some of these smaller operations will have people in places of um, administrative assistance, things like that. And they're so talented, they're good people and they're doing everything, but there's no process. So if that person leaves or is sick, the business comes to a halt. Exactly. And if that person leaves or moves out of the area or whatever happens, then you've got to replace and start from scratch where right. you have these systems in place. It's, you know, you can plug and play people. You can actually move much I've faster. Always, I remember when I was young, I was fortunate to have smart people to, to teach me certain things. Mm -hmm. Coaches, and yep. coaches, I mean, it just like people were just by luck. Luckily, I was around certain people. And one of the things I learned at a very early age or early in my career was anything that you do in terms of your file, in terms of your business. If somebody, if you, God forbid, died today and somebody came in and, want, and had to take over, like, it needs to be so easy for them where a third grader could come and do it. Right. Yeah. And a lot of us are guilty of not managing our businesses the right way, because if I don't want my business to be relying on me because right. It's like, that's when you know, you've got a great business when you can leave for three months and come back. And not only is your business there and thriving, but you've made money. Yeah. That's, 
know you've got a good business. And it's paying for your trip when you're gone for three months. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's right. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think one other thing is like people, especially with team leaders and brokers, I'm like totally hogging the time right now, by the way. I'm sorry. Like, you're the guest. This is good. You're the guest. Uh, yeah. I know you have some other questions and, and everything. I want to get to those too. But like one thing I think that we get, we get stuck is um, as team leaders and brokers, we have a hard time, especially coming from the agent world. We have a very, very, very hard time. This is one of the most difficult things is letting go. Yeah. Letting go. We're control we, freaks. Control, we control everything. We, and it's our personality, you mm -hmm. know, and like our clients only like us, we think, right? Yeah. So it's the hardest part, but it has to happen if you want to grow, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, and what the way that I was able to do that, and I'll stop after this, is, uh, is um, take a piece of paper and then write out everything you do, let's say every hour, right? Take a piece of paper, write out everything you do every hour for a week. Before you know it, you're going to see, first of all, your day is so inefficient. Mine is, right? When I did that. And then you're going to see the things that you really don't enjoy doing and take those items and put them to, to the side. And then you take the items that you love to do that are dollar producing or that. And so the items that you don't enjoy, guess what that is? That's you your job. Everyone, you delegate them, right? What, that's your job description. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's just create a job description for when you post your ad that you're going to go hire your assistant. So <laughs> it's just about being efficient. Oh, I'll tell you just one quick aside. Travis has a question for you. Um, I used to do the same thing with the managers I work with and I'd have them do 15. I'd say, envision yourself as an attorney. You're doing billable hours and you're billing it, and attorneys bill at 15 minute increments. Uh, and so look at what are you spending your time on and then reflect back on that exercise. And you can print that off online, they're free and print off a week, 15 minute increments. And it's amazing to see how much wasted time or time of unproductive time is going on. And that when you highlight and see that, it's, it enables you then to take action. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I, I, Jack, Jack and our team uses this little, it's not a, it's not a ball, but it, uh, I got a golf ball here, but it's like a little, eight sided thing and it, and you flip it over and the, the software actually tracks what you're doing for you. And so it, it's automatic. I don't remember the name of it. I'll have to get it, but it's, yeah. it's pretty neat. And I follow that same philosophy too. And, and Ninja selling um, calls it pie time. P stands for productivity. I is indirect productivity and E is everything else. And so if you can bucket your time, you try to get rid of as much of the E as you can and the more efficient you are in the P and the I you're then you're you know, obviously those are high dollar producing things. Um, so let's, let's go to, let's go to technology a little bit. And obviously we're seeing some major changes and trends in our industry. Um, and how, how are you seeing technology affecting just the consumer experience, the interaction with your brand and the selling of homes? Um, we know about zoom and you're probably doing a ton of zooms like everybody else, but what else is it affecting for you guys? Um, well, I just think clients are, are, it's more acceptable as people are, is also expecting, they're expecting you to be knowledgeable and be comfortable leveraging technology. I mean, really, it's just, I think it's more related to com just communicating, like we're not physically able to meet as much as we were before. And so just being able to communicate is becoming more and more uh, digital and people expect it. So like, make sure you're up on your Zoom game, like make sure you're comfortable doing like virtual virtual showings and virtual open houses and stuff like that um in terms of what else it's it's, it's affecting I'm, I'm not really sure i mean i think it's mainly from what i've seen is just more on the, on the communication side and in terms of like operation yeah. i mean well, it's like well, and, and it, it probably extends to the you kind of grew up with this but some of those brokers out there that don't have zoom integrated into their calendar that don't like any extra back and forth with the consumer, it's just slowing everything down. So making sure you're efficient with your calendar, maybe even like Calendly and, and, and Zoom integrated into the calendar, stuff like that, so that you can quickly and efficiently get messaging and communication off to the consumer. Yeah. Oh, totally. I mean, those, like you said, are just things that we've all, we've been, I've been doing for like five or six, like for a long time, like when Calendly first came out. So yeah, I'm, I'm probably just missing some of those things just because I already do them. So it's yeah. like, it's natural <laughs> but it's uh but just i mean people expect to communicate digitally so just be comfortable with it and if you're not if you don't know how to use a lot of those things like maybe just find someone that does or or 
um, you kind of have to get comfortable, you know, or find clients that aren't comfortable with it too. And those are the ones you focus on, you know, like, so, um, but yeah. But tell me about, um, uh, you know, we talked earlier about, uh, and you're kind of tech forward, you forward. So when COVID came about, you know, you were already doing the zoom, you're already doing a lot of the things that, you know, what, as we've talked, everything fast forward, a lot of the brokers, a lot of agents who didn't do that now have been forced to, and now they're becoming after seven, eight months, becoming comfortable with it. Right. So is there anything new um, that you've brought about that you've brought about in the last eight, nine, seven months, six months that you see you've taken your game to another that you think through COVID or something else? Is there anything you can say that you can put your finger on? We're doing this now, which we didn't do before, or we tweak this or we changed, revised this a little bit and in, in, through technology. Um, just um, like when we do our lives where there's, uh, I forgot the name of this, I think it's called StreamYard. I forgot what it's called but basically like going live in multiple places. So like, yeah. you know, like, I mean, if I'm doing a, a virtual open house, if I, um, you know, instead of like, maybe just doing it on Facebook, I can post it at the same time on all the social channels um, while like doing it live. So I think it's called StreamYard and uh, it's, it's, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's um, yeah. And that's it a is, new product. That's a, yeah, so that's, that's good. It's taking the game to another level. Yeah. Yeah. So just, I mean, I think it's important to, because people are staying home and, you know, mm -hmm. aren't really doing open houses anymore. It's very important to be visible digitally. Like it's important to be seen, right? Like, yeah, it's like, you have to communicate with people and, and, uh, and it's not, you know, like, so it's using, finding the channel, spending the time where people are, where, where your audience is spending time. Like think about who is your audience, but you know, with that said, like, if you have people that, in your audience or your sphere or your potential client base um, that maybe hasn't embraced technology as much, then that's okay. Like then go where they are, right? Like do what they're up, do what they're doing, do what your clients are focusing, like fo focus on what your, what your clients find useful and where they're comfortable. And so there's still a group of people in our community that haven't and clients that haven't embraced technology and that's cool. But just folk, like figure out what they're into and just like focus your business yeah. there. That's what I would do if I wasn't comfortable with technology. I'd find people that aren't comfortable with it too. And that's my, those are my clients, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. Ke Kevin, do you have any kind of final words of wisdom for growing a team, growing a brokerage, taking it to the next level, whether it's, you know, accountability or reporting or metrics or, or technology that you want to share with the audience? Like, what are those two or three things that you just could not do without um, and share some words of wisdom? I think what's important is to lead with revenue and don't get carried away. Like when, when I first started, I, uh, I, I didn't, I didn't hire anyone or I didn't ask agents to join my team until I couldn't do any more on my own. You know, so it's, it's easy to get excited and say, oh, I'm going to start a team. I'm going to do a brokerage. I'm going to invest all this money. And like, it's not necessary. Like, you don't have to go and like buy, rent out a big office or do all this. It's like, just take it one step at a time. That's what I would say is like lead with revenue is get to a point where you've maxed yourself out or I can't do any more on my own. I write out that form that, you know, the document I've got, I can't do anymore. I was at the time when I first brought somebody on I was working from like five in the morning to like 3 a.m you know like it's, I couldn't do any more on my own and so just I think initially that's important and then once you you've gotten to a point where you've got the processes and you've written it all out and you've gotten to you're comfortable you're you know you created a system that's another thing is create systems mm -hmm. um, then you can start getting a little more uh, aggressive you know and then maybe building a business or or you know, starting something elsewhere that you can invest some money and take risks. But I'm very cautious with regards to spending because everything's been on my own. And so I think it's important for us to lead with revenue and uh, get to a point where I can't, I'm maxed out. Just be patient, right? Be patient. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I want to do it too, but you don't want to crash either. So just be smart, be patient, and it's going to come just step by step. There's this book called Atomic Habits. It's a good, you guys know that book? I don't, I'm writing it down. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna it know it. It's a cool book. It's really good. I mean, it talks about like our, you have a goal, but it's the things you do every day, like the little things every day. Mm -hmm. And there's this example in the book where he talks about a pilot 
is despite flying from San Francisco to Washington, DC. And he's on a path, but the path is off by like one tenth of a percent or something, right? He goes, you can't tell when you're right when you're flying, you have no clue. But by the time he gets to the end, he's not he's not in Washington, DC anymore. He's in like he's Florida. In, he's, he's in, in Roanoke, yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. Is those those little like step by step incremental yeah. things, and you just stay on the right path, and you're going before you know it, you look back like wow. Yeah, I'm here. It, so it, 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 does, it, it does seem like there's you you spend a lot of time on introspection, and we 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 hear a lot about working on the business or in the business rather than on the business, and it seems like you do that on a fairly resetting basic basis. Like I don't know if it's that's uh, biannually or annually, but it's like sit down and look at my calendar and what can we change. Um, and that's something that's often overlooked because too many people are working in the business rather than on the business uh, and, and growing it. So very it's interesting. So true. Very true. And you know, I, it's, you're right. You point that out. I didn't really think about that. It's actually, it's, I, I do do that. You do. And, and I think it's very important now, especially with COVID. I, I mean, to not only look at our business on a monthly quarterly or whatever, or look at what we're doing. I'm talking about like every 30 minutes, look at yourself and, and ask yourself, is what I'm doing right now productive? Am I on the right path? And it's so easy to get distracted with COVID. We're at home, our kids, TV, like election, Facebook, all this. So like, it's so easy to get sidetracked. And so it's important to like reassess, always look around and like self analyze yourself yeah. and see what yeah. you're up to. Is it, am I, am I on the right track? And if the answer is close to no, then you need to check yourself again and get back on. So Yes, um, it's a very important we, thing. We, we, got a question, we got a question that came in um, and we'll take a few questions here if anybody has them. But um, as we wind down, uh, Gwyneth says, I see no IDX home search on the Marker Real Estate website. So you're very brand oriented. Um, you know, how do you, how do you capture leads and how do you uh, meet the expectations of your clients without, without that on your website? Or do you use other websites? Yeah, or? so like on our website, I'll tell you like the, honest reason. It was just a straight cost reason. Uh, we're in so many different markets. I remember I was telling you efficiency and being mm -hmm. smart. Okay. Let me tell you, if I get an IDX site on my website, it's like 600 bucks a month or some, it's like a crazy number for, and imagine all the markets that we're in, mm -hmm. it's going to cost me so much money. So what we did instead, I can do the exact same thing. And I use real scout for 39 bucks a month. So mm -hmm. why would I, it's like, I don't care. So we, uh, we do have IDX and we generate thousands of leads. We just don't do it from our own site because it's just more cost effective. Yeah. Interesting. And, uh, yeah. and then in terms of upstream, what I was talking about on that, capturing leads upstream is through more, what I was mentioning is through your brand and your presence and being top of mind. So more like being seen on Facebook, doing video and just staying top of mind with people before, maybe even before they're thinking about buying or selling. That's what I mean by being upstream. By the time they click, they're already downstream, right? By the time they want more info, they're already further further down. So the point is you want to get in front of them before they've even thought about doing it because when they do, that's where you want to come in. You want to be the one that they think of. So if you build your pipeline large enough with enough people that it, they're going to start coming to you at that point. I hope that makes sense. That's a really good- Complete question. sense. Yeah. That's actually, Travis talks about it in form of uh, owning and renting. Like if you're buying leads, you're renting your business. Uh, if you if you create that magnetism, you go upstream, like you said, then you own it because that's something you have much more control over and you're not fighting all those other people. So it's kind of own rent versus rent. And speaking of owning, renting and, and, and assets and everything, I mean, think about video. Video is like owning a rental, okay? <laughs> because video is an asset that's always going to pay you over time. I have that video that I created three years ago that's on YouTube that people call me on still to this day. It's like a rental. It's like passive income. Yeah. So the more the content like that, that I produce so easily, the more passive income and more long-term assets that I create. And it's like a video is going to continue producing for you over time. Yeah. It's just awesome. so easy. I mean, Kevin, you're awesome, man. We've uh, thoroughly, boy, 45 minutes goes by fast. It's a uh, lot of really good information. Uh, thank you so much for sharing and, being so open with your business and sharing it with our listeners. Greatly appreciate it. Um, and just a reminder, everybody on the call, we're going to continue to have top team, top teams in the industry, top uh, professionals, entrepreneurs that they're working, doing some phenomenal things like Kevin. 
uh, this month. So we hope to see you at the next fireside chat. So thank you so much, Kevin. You take care. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity. Take care. See you, Bye -bye. Travis. All right. Bye.